This piece is called the Golden Haggadah, and it is the plagues of Egypt, scenes of liberation, and then preparation for Passover. Uh, and this text is in the British Library today, and um, it was uh, dated about 1320. It is another illuminated manuscript with pigment on vellum. So in regards to the context, first you have to know what the Haggadah means and what a Haggadah is and how it relates to um, specific Jewish traditions. A Haggadah means, the literal translation means narration. And it is narrating the events that sets forth the um, holiday of Passover for the Jewish people. Um, and so this is a Jewish text that, uh, that the usually gets read over the cedar ritual or a ritual feast. Cedar is spelled S E D E R. So Passover cedar is a Jewish ritual feast that marks the beginning of Passover. Cedar customs includes telling the story, then discussing the story, particularly in regards to instruction, trying to, to explain what it means, particularly to the children of the family. Uh, also drinking from four cups of wine and eating matzah or unleavened bread. And it's unleavened because the Jews fled in a hurry before the bread could rise. And so that's one of the reasons why they eat the unleavened bread. And also, in, there's a reclining in celebration of the freedom. Uh, reading the text is fulfillment of the scriptural command to tell your son of the Jewish liberation from slavery from Egypt as it was described from the book of Exodus in the Torah, the Jewish holy book. The purpose of the Haggadah is to remind Jews of God's mercy as the ten plagues of Egypt literally passed over the Jewish people as they hit Egypt. Uh, and that includes the, the 10 plagues include um, all of the water turning to blood and infestation of frogs, lice, boils, plague infecting the livestock, hail, locusts, darkness, and finally the death of the firstborn sons of, of the Egyptians who were slain by God, causing the Egyptian Pharaoh to free the Jewish slaves and allowing them to flee Egypt. So that's some of the background. The content of this manuscript in the left image, um, we well in the left image we see the different uh, plagues. So we have the plague of the frogs initiated by Moses. There's also the plague of lice for the Pharaoh and his magicians. And then in the lower left, Moses looks at the Pharaoh, uh, looks on as the Pharaoh is attacked by um, wild beasts. And on the lower right, there's the plague of the livestock. Uh, the middle image on the upper right is plague and death of the firstborn Egyptian children. In the up, and then also there's the Pharaoh ordering the Israelites to leave Egypt. And then also on the lower portion, Egyptians dressed in med medieval armor to attack the Israelites. And that's something interesting to note that what they're wearing is something that isn't um, timely to when this event actually happened, but, um, but dressing them in modern day outfits. Uh, and then also they have the Israelites safely crossing the Red Sea as the Egyptians drown. So the book was meant to be read right to left according to the manner of the Hebrew texts. And it's made out of the vellum pages. Um, in the right image, we have Miriam, Moses' sister, holding a tambourine decorated with an Islamic motif. And she is joined by maidens dancing and playing contemporary music instruments. In the upper left, the master of the house is sitting under a canopy, and he orders the distribution of the matzah and haroset, or sweetmeats, to children. In the lower right, the family prepares the house for Passover, the women clean and the men search for leaven. And in the lower left, people are also preparing for more of Passover where the sheep are slaughtered and utensils are being purified. 
In regards to art context, it's a narrative of events from the book of Genesis and Exodus. And since the manuscript is to be used in homes, the conventions are less strict. Artists of uh, this piece, so this manuscript, was actually likely a Christian who illustrated the manuscript, but a Jewish scribe wrote the Hebrew text. There's a lot of similarities with the French Gothic manuscripts, particularly in the handling of the space, the architecture, figure style, and facial and gestural expression, and then the medium of the manuscript itself, the use of the gold and the different colors. This was painted in Barcelona, Spain, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, there were 56 miniatures using gold leaf, and owning this book is definitely showing the, the wealth. It's an indicator of the wealth of the patron or of the owners. Um, some, some of the things that is important about this is how it has a lot of cross cultural styles. There's this blend of Christian, Islamic, and Jewish styles. And that has to do with where it was produced. Barcelona is a port city on the Mediterranean, so one of the very southern tips of uh, Spain. And it had been controlled by both Islamic and Christians, but also there were a, a population of Jews. And the Muslims, the Christians, and the Jews we're living together on the Iberian Peninsula, and um, so we definitely see this, this mix of cultures. The Golden Haggadah is representative of the impact of Jewish culture had in med medieval Spain and the rich multicultural atmosphere that produced it. Another example that shows this blend is that, the Mose that Moses and the Pharaoh, um, they don't look like they are from North Africa. They look more like they're French kings. So we're seeing the Christian uh, style in that regard because it seems like it's almost getting its influence from Christian illuminated manuscripts. Um, uh, also, we saw uh, the Islamic influence with um, the, some of the decoration of the architecture and the buildings. And so that's why this piece is so significant is not only does it show off the wealth of the Jewish family who owns it, but that it is a combination of styles. Um, and so this is one of our Jewish pieces of art that we get to learn about. So this is a, the Golden Haggadah.